day, everyone, and welcome to St. Anthony Catholic Church. It is Thursday, the 28th week in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Bill and Phyllis Wells. It is also the memorial of St. Teresa of Jesus, Virgin and Doctor of the Church. St. Teresa of Jesus of Avila, or Avila, 1515-1582 is one of the most down-to-earth mystics that the church has ever known. She was described as intelligent, hard-headed, charming, and deeply spiritual. Another described her as talented, outgoing, affectionate, affectionate courageous, totally human. She is wise, yet practical, intelligent, yet much in tune with her experience, mystical, yet an energetic reformer. The mark she left on the church and the world is threefold. She was a woman, she was a contemplative, she was an active reformer. Born at Avila, or Avila, on March 28, 1515, Teresa was later educated by Augustine. Augustinian nuns. She had to leave that convent because of illness. In 1536, she entered the Carmelite convent, convent at Avila, left two years later because of illness and returned in 1540. Her mystical experiences began 15 years later. It was only after much anguish and the assurances of St. Peter of Algon Alcantara, that she became convinced of the authenticity of her experiences. In 1562, she founded her first convent of Reformed Carmelites. These were nuns who wished a more cloistered and contemplative observance rather than the relaxed discipline of her time. She went on to found 16 more, traveling throughout Spain. At the time she founded her second convent, she met a young Carmelite, John of the Cross, and through him founded her first monastery for men. Her years of reform and renewal were tur through turbulent years of struggle, but Teresa was equal to the task. Teresa's letters and writings are spiritual classes including her autobiography. Other major writings are The Way of Perfection, The Interior Castle. If you want proof that a mystic can be practical, read St. Teresa. For her action must be nourished by prayer and contemplation in union with the redeeming Christ. She taught that mental prayer is the best means of making oneself available and useful to the church and to all in the church. St. Teresa of Jesus is one of the greatest mystics of the church, and it was a glorious day in 1970 when she was declared a doctor of the church. It was an official and public recognition of something that the church long knew, that God, by his spirit, raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show his church the way to perfection. So we pray that her inspired teachings awaken in us a longing for true holiness. Our opening hymn is number 719, At the Name of Jesus.
with you. God called us to follow him. Let us pause for a moment to reflect the times of our lives. But we have not faithfully followed the Lord. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his hard mercy. Lord Jesus, you are said to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to follow you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you love us so much that you willingly die for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 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 Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Spirit raise up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the Church the way to seek perfection and grant that we may always be nourished by the food of our heavenly teaching and fired with longing for true holiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the holy ones who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In Christ we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord, the Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord, the Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing jo joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song and sing praise. The, the Lord, Lord has made known his salvation. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord has made known his salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Holy Gospel 
according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, the Lord said, Woe to you who build the memorials of the prophets, whom your father killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute, in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, and from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law. You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourself did not enter, and, stop, and you stopped those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and the Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and began to interrogate him about many things. For they were plotting to catch him at something he might say, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. There is a woman for the past eight months since this epidemic pandemic started had a huge amount of fear. She was convinced that she'll get the coronavirus and that she will spread the, the virus to, her, to the people she loved in her life. She was so sure. And as a result, she lived in a lot of fear, worried every single moment this could happen to her. At any moment, her life would be turned upside down. And as a result, she had a huge amount of a big chronic headache, lot hair loss, upset stomach, high blood pressure. And of course, she was very miserable and sad. Now, in light of faith, in light of the readings today, how would you respond to her? Can you assure her that coronavirus would never, that she, would, she won't get the coronavirus? No. You cannot assure her. So, what would you say to her? The Lord will not give you anything if you cannot handle it. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that's gonna really going to give her comfort? Like, yes, I may get the coronavirus, but God will give me, will, will give me something else, unless I can be able to handle it. Well, thanks for the word of confidence, God. <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing. The Lord has faith in you that the Lord will so it's a good thing if she got the coronavirus. Is that what you're telling me? No, it's not. That's twisting the words. <laughs> so tell me, what do you mean? It's it's a you know it's like when somebody comes to you who's rude and who's intolerable. That's the way the Lord gave you that person to practice tolerance and patience. Okay, so it's a good you thing. Always try to look at the positive. <laughs> So you should be happy when someone is miserable, mean to you, because that will give you a chance to be patient. Is that what you're telling me? Not at all. When somebody is miserable to you, Father, when somebody is miserable, you, you of course, empathize with them, and you tell them that the Lord is with them. Don't yes, the I'm sure that's what people do. Yeah. Oftentimes, is that the reality for most of us? No, we'll get really upset, and, and we'll ask, why me, Lord? Why me? So getting back to my question, how do you comfort her? Oh, hard, 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 hard to get over it. <laughs> Boy, you guys sure are, are a bunch of comforting people. Yeah, I'm not about comforting you, kid. Right. Uh, We're all in this together, so just sit. <laughs> Thy will be done. <laughs> Yes, God's will is done. And what is exactly is God's will in all this? For us to keep faith in Him. That's right, to ultimately to keep faith in this. That this too shall pass. And oftentimes, you know, we forget that ultimately God has shown His salvation. How does God show His salvation? Through a book called the Bible? 
that if we read all this, the yeah. book, this good book, will have all the answers? You just have to look at the cross, how he died for us. And how does the cross answer our question? Faith. That the cross ultimately brings new life, even though you may not see it or experience it right now. That ultimately, you know, guess what? The big, the big, one of the biggest hidden secrets of the world is guess what? Even if you don't get the coronavirus, would you be able, would that, would you someday die? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we'll die of something, right? That's already a given. I can tell you 100% with sure in life. There's only two things that are certain in life. What are they? Death and taxes. Death and taxes. That's right. It's guaranteed. And for those who do not know the Lord, it's a very a, a scary thing, which, I, which is perfectly understandable. But God has a plan, has a mission, has a plan for us. That this world is not an end all to be all of everything. And if we are and if we don't know the Lord, all we want to do is just to hang on to this world. That, you know, and you, I don't know about you, but eight months of hyper vigilant and fear is awfully a long time. And guess what? Is it going to be over by tomorrow? No, it isn't. Next week? Next month? Miracle can happen. Yes, miracle. Yes, it could. But unlikely, right? Miracle by definition being what? Something impossible. Then. Yes, something impossible. A long shot. But you know what is not a long shot? It's God's love and God's mercy. If we truly believe that in our core of our heart, really, really believe it. I don't mean say it, but believe in the core of your heart that God has something better than this world can offer you. Then that should be something to look forward to then that's something like, yeah, if I get it, I get it. I mean, it's all in God's hands. Does that mean I'm going to be going out there partying and partying and putting myself at risk? It doesn't. Yeah. It means that, you know, yes, I will live in prudence, but you know what happened, no matter what happened, it's in God's hands. And I choose, it's a decision I choose to make in my life. No, I choose not to live in fear. I choose to put my life in God's hands. And that's what God is asking each and every one of us every moment. You know, we have recently, the church have recently canonized a new teenager as a saint, beatified, beatification. He's blessed now. One would think, boy, at 15, God took him from this world. I don't know about you, but does that sound fair? No. No, because one would think, if he's that holy, wonderful holy, one would think, boy, he got so much more to offer this world, but yet God took him away. And one would think, well, boy, but you know, in the 15 years of life that he, that he lived here, one would think, well, that's an awfully short life. But what if those 15 years that's filled with God's love and God's mercy, that every woman, he know that he's loved, and yet for many others who live 100 years or 80, 90 years, and all those years are just miserable years, feeling unloved, feeling, well, does, always asking, does anyone love me? I feel so alone. I feel lost in this world. I don't know about you, but that 15 years sounds like a lot better than a lot longer years when a person feels so empty. It's just a lot, one year of misery after another. And we, you know how we choose whether we have this happiness or joy in this life is ultimately up to who? It's up to us. Whether we choose to, to accept that, yes, Lord, death is part of my life. Guess what? I'm, I can't avoid it, but I choose not to avoid it anyway because I know through that death comes the resurrection, comes your, is your love. And if we really make it God a, really a part of our life, not just for today, but this day and all the days of our life that God is real to me. I don't check in, I don't come to God when I need something, but when I come to God all every day because He's real in my life, that would, should really change my life. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to reflect on God's love and God's mission for you in your life. 
that in doing so, may you and I truly always be free from all fears, from all the worries, all the things that keep us up at night, all the things that keep us from truly living the fullness of life that God intends for us to live. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's love and mercy, let us turn to now for all our needs and all the needs of the world. For Pope Francis, for Alexander, our bishop, and all our priests, bishops, and deacons, may God's grace be upon them to help them to lead and guide their people to everlasting life, we pray the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all those who feel alone, who feel lost, who feel so overwhelmed with fear and worry, that they may turn to the Lord and open their minds and hearts to recognize God's love for them and God's plan for them for greater things than what this offer, world can offer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us also pray for all the prayers and concern and the worries that lie deep within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving, compassionate Father, accept the prayers of your family gathered here. Help each and every one of us, Lord, to turn to you that in doing so, may we experience your love and your mercy. We ask to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our presentation of the gift song is number 353, Vine and Branches, 353. Mm -hmm. Saints, 
We too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and our examiner, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and be co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I need you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other sacrifice. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. The communion hymn is number 507. We have been told. Goodbye. Teresa, 
and rejoice to sing of your mercies for all eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You are invited to join our online giving program. It's, it makes it an easy, secure way to donate to our church. You can either donate by credit card or debit card. And if you'd like, you can have direct deposit from your bank account. Just go to our webpage and click on giving and you'll have step-by-step -step easy instruction how to follow through it. Also, remember, if you like to attend daily mass, please email the office. We have spaces available from Monday to Thursday. I think with the new COVID regulation, we're allowed to have up to 50 people in church. So if you'd like to join us for daily mass, please be sure to do that. If you'd like to make a mass intention, please email or snail mail your request to the office. And you can also make an appointment for confession. If you'd like to do that, please email me. My email address is on our webpage on the back of the bulletin. And remember, our Bible study has been resumed, and we are meeting each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Please send an email to the office to receive login information. We'll, we'll help you set up a Zoom account to do that. And remember, on, uh, Adoration now is available online. If you'd like to join us for Adoration online, just go to our webpage and click on Adoration. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wicked and the sins of the devil. May God reveal to me humble and pray. And if you bow the priests of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, the eyes of the hell of Satan, and all the evil spirits who cry out all about the world seeking their own souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 379. Uh, God has chosen.